I've surfed waves from one foot to 30 foot. And definitely the fear factor on a 30 foot wave is incredible. You are right out in the middle of the ocean with the sharks, with whales, and right below you, you have razor sharp coral. You're having to conquer the elements. You are afraid. Every surf break is different. Every surf break offers a challenge that a surfer has to overcome. My full name is Gregory McFall. I am a seventh and eighth grade history teacher at Warner Middle School in Westminster. I was born in Warsaw, Indiana. We moved here in 1966, surfed religiously since the age of 13. When I was growing up, I knew my calling was always going to be working with people. He started his own insurance agency for over 10 years and was ranked one of the top sales producers in the United States. I wasn't quite feeling completely fulfilled with the insurance business. I was very successful at it, but something was missing. I'd come home, I'd see Kay extremely happy and having interactions with students, and I wanted to have that experience where I felt like I was part of something bigger than myself. I had an opportunity to start practicing karate, received my black belt after about three years. My first experience in teaching came through the karate studio when two brothers were bouncing off the walls and it was my first day teaching. I saw the two boys excel. At first, it was very gradual. It was getting them to kneel, to focus, and I just built upon that growth. I realized to get them to the point of black belt, it was gonna take time. It was at that moment that I knew I wanted to sell my insurance practice, and I wanted to go into teaching. I realized that if I wanted to go to the next level professionally, I needed my master's degree. So we decided to get our master's in curriculum and instruction from Concordia University. I graduated from Concordia in 2008. All along through the master's process, the classes were so in tune to what I was already doing in the classroom. It felt like such a natural process to experiment with these ideas in the classroom. You guys are already caught up. I got you guys caught up yesterday with that era of reform where you did the Dr. Phil show and then you did your exit slip, remember, about the second great awakening? At any one time in a classroom, I've got some kids that speak English, some that don't. I've got some kids that are achieving at a high level, some at an average, some at a low. Somehow I've got to, in 42 minutes, hook them all and continue to do this throughout the entire day. You gotta make it seem like what you're saying to them is more important than anything else going on in their lives. You gotta captivate them. Uncle Sam wants you. <laughs> he dresses up probably three or four times a year. It's kind of like a simulation reenactment that he does for the kids. It's hysterical. The kids love it. It's funny. Uh, he dressed up as a pharaoh, Abe Lincoln, Uncle Sam. He uh, makes learning fun. He doesn't do things like other teachers do. Other teachers, they would just teach us a lesson. But Greg, he takes hours of his free time making these presentations. Are you sure your bridge is going to support at least three people of that family? Okay, now put your other eraser in. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. 12, 13 teenagers, they can see right through baloney. You can have the most subject matter in the world. Kids won't buy into what you're teaching if they don't know you care. I started a surf club at Johnson Middle School. Some of the kids had never even been to the ocean and they're only 10 miles away. You know, and I thought, what a travesty. So I started the surf club. I purchased all the boards at first. I couldn't get a budget, so I'd drive from San Diego to Santa Cruz purchasing surfboards at garage sales. If you're too far forward, it's gonna nosedive. It's a constant balance and it's a constant adjustment when you're out there. Then I noticed that I was missing a group of kids. These were some of the special needs kids. I said, could I try? And as soon as we got into the ocean, there was like a moment of a comfortable silence and then just screams of joy. I mean, these kids were so stoked to be in that water. They just got it. They take that back to the classroom. They take that back to the school. 
And it's especially rewarding when kids come up to me the next day to remind me, hey, did you see me, Mr. McFall? Did you see me get up? Do you remember that I got up? And just really excited to share that moment. And of course I remember. Since the time I graduated from Concordia, I was selected as a District Teacher of the Year, Orange County Teacher of the Year, and State Teacher of the Year. It was a very humbling experience, but I kind of realized that sometimes people are given awards and that's not the end. That's really only the beginning of the journey. You grow into that award and I feel that through my training at Concordia, through my practical applications in the classroom, I'm continuing to fine tune my ability. Earning the Master's in Curriculum and Instruction made him the teacher that he is today. At any one time, there's a percentage of people that feel powerless. Kids are no different. There was a student in one of my classes. I could just tell it was just always disengaged. I just felt compelled to really just ask her, do you believe that I believe in you? It took her by surprise. She didn't, wasn't expecting that. And I just wanted her to know, I believe in you. Do you believe I believe in you? And something clicked with her that she hadn't had somebody that really, truly, she felt believed in her, believed that she could do it. And since that moment I had the conference with this girl, she's been a different girl. Emerson said, before we can move the world, we have to first move ourselves. And when he looked the person in the eye and said, tell him I did the best I could with what I had. Pretty powerful words. Can you say the same thing? Tell people I did the best I could with what I had. Just like masterpieces take time, students take time. I look at my students as masterpieces, as Van Gogh's, as artwork. And you have to be willing to invest that time into the students, meet them where they're at, to create that masterpiece. Mr. McFall actually inspired me to want to be a teacher. He really has inspired me to be a good man. Honestly, I think that, you know, I'm not the greatest teacher in the world. I just care. And I think that comes out in my interactions with the students, instilling in them a belief that they can succeed no matter what. One of the things I'd learned from my grandmother is a quote that I remember, the world is yours if you seek it. One does not get fixed on just one object or one thing. And you keep pushing yourself and keep moving forward and keep trying to accomplish new goals and setting new goals. And you're gonna fail. Just like in surfing, you're gonna fall off a wave, you know, but you get right back on, you paddle out, and you take the next one and you just keep trying new things, you keep pushing yourself to achieve something you never thought possible.